Dudes, this is going to be a good one. Today, I'm going to teach you the secret sauce for jumping up your PMP understanding so you have that confidence and you can actually go and get this thing done and be better for it. I know that's what I talk about all the time, but today we are getting into like the guts, the DNA of what it takes. So this was inspired by a conversation that I just had. It obviously got me fairly fired up, all right, with a student who's not even a student yet. He's a podcast listener, YouTube listener, you know, flashcard dude. He went to a coaching call last night. We talked and he said like, okay, this is what made the big jump for him or it's making the big jump for him. I am obviously pumped because he's going to destroy this thing. We're going to ace it and you can too. So the big thing that we talked about, the thing you got to know is that what really matters is understanding, not memorizing. So all these thick, boring ass books and all this other stuff, zero, sorry for cursing, zero importance. You have to break things down at a logical level. And just like they say with law, like you practice law, you've heard that, right? You practice law. You've got to in your mind and in your job, you've got to practice project management. There is no, you know, Mount Olympus perfection. It is dudes, we're walking up the hill, going to little plateaus, getting better and better. And every single different elevation change is another punch in the literal face that we get to go and say, dude, thank you for opening the door of learning. Now, let me share, you know, that's our whole philosophy, right? That's my philosophy in teaching. It's like, yo, let's talk about real project management. Let's understand the problems and let's understand why we cause these problems and how to navigate ourselves out of them. Now, the way I want you to think about this is I want you to take any topic, Okay, we're going to take Agile, okay? We're going to take uh, the review ceremony or meeting at the end of a sprint, right? So if we're in Scrum or in Agile, picture it with me in your mind. You've already set things up. The team's working. You're at the end. What I'm trying to do is to tell you what you need to do is you need to settle in to the actual meeting. If you've been in one, fantastic. Go through your mental Rolodex and think about all the experiences. If you haven't, picture it. Call me, call my coaches, call my students. We can help you picture it. The videos help a lot. So we're in this demo, this review meeting at the end of a sprint. What could happen, dude? Everything isn't all puppy dogs and rainbows. What can go bad? Well, the goal of the review meeting, tell me what it is. A lot of you out there is like, oh, we're going to check off the work. Eh, kind of. But in reality, we're making a coffee cup. A functional coffee cup, right? Boom, we, we add some features to this thing. At the end of the sprint, are you just trying to go, if you're the product owner, this is your life, your heart, your your soul on it? Are you trying to say, yep, you built a coffee cup. Yep, you put a handle on it. Yep, you put a cool picture on it. Yep, you did this. You had those little sippy thingy, whatever it is. Are you just trying to check the boxes? Yes, you met the acceptance criteria. Yeah, 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 you built it. Oh yeah, it, it seems there. Is that what you're trying to do at the end of the, the sprint and the demo review meeting? Yeah, kind of, but really, what are you trying to do? You're like, dude, I just invested my my effort in putting the right things in front of my team. I paid for the team. Those geniuses are out there cranking away, finding solutions to innovating in the coffee world to do that. Let me inspect it. In the, in the, let me feel it. Let me touch it. Let me drink from it. Let me handle it. Let me put hot stuff in there, cold stuff in there. Let me mm, really challenge it. That inspection is the goal of the demo, of the review at the end inspection put that in your brain inspection for purpose for solving the problem for making sure that it actually works the way you want it to now what might happen is they might build it to what you and them thought was the answer but you might put your hands on it you might you know what that's not exactly what i thought the handle would be like that's not what i thought it was going to work like that's what that what should feel like that's now i realize that it's not what I know, what I need, what I want and stuff. Is that a bad thing? No, that's a beautiful thing. That's the goal. That's why we work in increments. That's why we work in little iterations and create increments for two weeks so that we can inspect a working product, a potentially shippable piece of increment of of there to actually learn from. So that's a relatively happy path. You get there and you go like, yeah, roll it, Jack, put it out there. Or if it doesn't work, let's go back Put it in the backlog, let's refine, let's boom, let's push it through again. So do you see that where you're going in there and you're actually feeling it? Let's go to the negative path, one might think. What happens if you get to the end of a sprint, you're in the demo meeting or right before it, and you go, oh, we had 12 stories to do. We only got done with seven. 
what do we do then? Like, your team's going to go like, sorry, boss. We only got done with seven. We didn't get done with 12. What do you do? Well, the options would either be, okay, let's think about it. Logically, what are the options? We can say, okay, well, let's look at everything that you you worked on. We'll look at all 12, the seven you completed and the seven you didn't complete. That's one option. Look at it all. There's another option to say, hey, you only completed seven. Well, how much time do you need? You need like two, two and a half days? Okay, no, no, no. I want to get it done. We're in the fight. We want to get it done. So two-week sprint. All right, let's make it two-week and two days. So let's spread it out. Can you get it done in two days? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, I'll see you in two days. I'll see you on Tuesday. No big deal. Get it done. Get it done, y'all. That's option two. Option three is, dude, you didn't get it done. Hit him with a hammer, right? You failed, team. Option four could be take the materials, only look at the things that we did, and then throw the other ones back in the backlog. That's four options. There's probably more options, but which one would you do? Put yourself in there. The pressure of the product owner being like, yo, the team committed to doing these user stories. We gave two weeks. At the end, they didn't get them all done. What would you do? Now, a lot of you out there might be like, hey, dude, stretch it out two more days. What the heck is two days in a 365-day year? But here, what that does is it keeps you from understanding and working through the pains of progress. Because if you give two days, what's to say next time you give them four days and two weeks and four weeks? And then the next thing you're going to do is you don't have standards and iterations to go there. So here's the thing. You cannot extend the sprint. You cannot. Two weeks is two weeks. Now you are going to be, you're going to feel the pressure in your chest and your brain to want to do it. I have succumbed to that pressure. I have. You will don't make the mistakes that I have done in the past and that you will. Lock it down two weeks, two weeks. Let's go through the things that we actually completed. So partially completed work is not evaluated during the demo. Only things that are done and that we have as increments so that we can push out potentially. So we're only going to look at stuff that's done. So Oh, that's going to be, the team might be like, well, dude, like we're 88% done. Like, why can't we just look at it? No, if it ain't done, we don't inspect it, right? Because it's not done to the level that needs inspection at this point. Doesn't mean we don't look at it while we're working, right? But the formal inspection is at the end. Now, okay, so if we have seven and, you know, they're potentially shippable, what do we do with the other five? Throw them away roll them over to the next sprint automatically because there's another one coming on the, the tail? What do you think? What would you do? Always ask yourself, what would you do? Now, it's a natural inclination. I know a lot of people out there are going to say, roll it over, dude. There's another one, another train coming. Throw it in the train cars. <clears throat> what would be the potential risk of doing that? Well, first of all, it takes the pressure off of like finishing it and finding a way. And secondly, Maybe the world has changed, the product world. Our understanding of what we need, our priorities, our demands, maybe that's affected and we need to go back and make better adjustments on what should be next. So we're going to take those five things that we didn't do. And we're going to take them back into the back product backlog so that they can go fight for their life, if you will, to be, oh, try to get to the top, you know? to be the highly ordered user stories to come into the next sprint. Maybe there's things framed up where you realize, you know what? We're going to cut bait on the thing that we just did. We got enough out. We're not going to do these other ones. They drop down or that something else is taking priority for whatever reason. So we got to evaluate. We can't just roll it over, right? Got to explain this to your team. You got to maintain principles by yourself. So we know what's going to happen. Then at the end of the day, We've got to have conversations in the retrospective about, well, why didn't we get the work done? The natural inclination is to say the team took on too much work. They pulled the work in. They brought in too much work. Possibly. That could be it. Why did they do that? So you start root causing. Well, maybe we didn't understand what our capabilities or our team's you know, skills are or we're not communicating well, so it's making it more less efficient, all these different things. But that is just one of the myriad of reasons. So in the retro, you want to open up and look like you're in a crystal or I don't know if it's crystal, but like I like to think about it like in a factory. 
What if you're in like an office that's like sitting way up high and you can see the whole factory? You can see all the different things because Agile in a way is a mechanism, a framework, a process for getting work done. There's a backlog where we store raw materials. We prioritize what we got to work. We have conversations in the iteration planning to make sure that we have the right stuff up there with the team and the workers understand the dev team. And then we bring it in. They take accountability for it. They have a sprint goal they're trying to achieve to serve the product owner and the customer and the product, right? And then they work it through daily scrums, daily standups to, you know, progress, you know, for each other and synchronize how they're doing things to make sure that we are working together in a sense. Then we inspect and then we do it again. Right? So if you're looking there, you're saying like, God, we didn't get stuff done. Why? You might be like, dude, product owner, you, everybody knows you got a heck of a personality, bro. We're kind of scared of you. We're kind of scared of you. You come in there all hustery, blustery. You don't let us talk. You push down these things. The stories are great in principle, but they ain't broken down enough. We need you to do a little bit better refining it so that it's lined up so that we can have conversations better. And you know what? We need to do better as the team to push back on you to make sure that we define what it is. And you know what? We're not doing a good job at defining what acceptance criteria are for these things. That would help us a lot. And these sprint goals are really loose and they're not well-defined. And we don't understand what the customer actually wants. And then we could look at ourselves as we, I'm listing out things that could go sideways, right? Reasons why sprints could fail. So we've got to appreciate. We could say, yo, dude, like, um, team, let's look at each other, dudes. Like, why are you hoarding work for like two days and you have problems, but you're not raising your hand? Like, dude, like nobody's judging you, bro. Like we got to communicate better. And then West Coast and East Coast dudes, you're working on different schedules. How do we synchronize better? And then like, how do we know what each of our skills are? And then like some of us are like, it seems to blow up and we don't handle conflict. So I'm saying that we go and look at ourselves like we're a football team and we say, look at the game tape, Chuck, and figure out what the deal is, where, where, where we're having problems. That's what we're trying to do. So if we hold ourselves accountable to the two weeks, we inspect what we need to, what we got done. We throw the stuff back in there so it evaluates and makes sure that it's right for the next thing. We are holding to the lightweight framework that helps us succeed. And then we're cranking on the knobs and the things that make us better in the retro. And if we visualize all the different ways that work can get screwed up, we have the fodder for understanding. Then if you want to make it super fantastic, I don't care if it's a little project or a multi jibillion dollar project, Find something, try it, fail, and tell people about it. Don't tell people like, oh, we, you know, we're bad or we're good or make up stories. No, here's what we face. We ain't getting stuff done. Why do you think that could happen? And just like a good scrum master, they may push back and go like, have you thought about this? Or what have you recognized? Or all these things. They're going to ask you Socratically type, you know, framed questions so that you can appreciate where the cracks are or the issues are in your game. So we've got to pretend we got to visualize. We've got to experiment like it's our life. That's what we do, dudes. Because if somebody jumped in halfway through this rant, would they go, oh, they're talking about PMP test. Oh, they're talking about that. They'd be like, nah, dude, you're talking about agile and getting better. That, that's what we're trying to do. If you want to succeed on the exam, give up on the rest of the junk memorization data dumps blah 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 paint drying type lessons where it's like literally the most boring thing in the, the human world would put like you to sleep even if you're jacked up on mountain dew like go to talk about the realities but do it in a positive engaged collaborative i gotta figure a way to get this better with the team kind of way if you do that it gets better, dude. And you actually ace the exam. You feel confident. Your shoulders are a little farther back. You're standing a little taller. You have a little bit more humility. You're making a bigger difference. You got a little shine on your face. Like people see you a little bit different and you make a bigger difference at your company, at your organization, at your home and all that stuff. And realize it's not going to be an overnight success. You got to fail your way there, man. Me too. Lit a lot of money on fire trying to make stuff better. I'm going to continue to do it. And Lord willing, I can get better at it. 
So if you want to get into involved in this party, let's go. PM Master Prep. Go there, hit the button for the free trial, log in, check out some of the videos. You get to go to a coaching call. We get to solve questions together. Whatever problems you got, I'm going to do my best to solve them. Let's do this thing. See you later. Yeah.